The Tracksmith Elliott Runner is a PBAX powered daily trainer inspired by the pep of New England's natural surfaces. It is on the pricey side, not gonna lie. So is it worth the cost and did Tracksmith succeed with their first shoe? Well, let's find out. Well, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. First, I wanna let you know that Tracksmith did send the Elliott Runner to me to review. They're not gonna see this footage ahead of time. They're not gonna proof it. I'm gonna say my complete honest thoughts just like always. Always. Well, first, let's go over the stats of the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. First, like I said, it is a neutral daily training shoe, and there is a fair amount of flex and twist to the shoe, as you can see there. As for the stack height, the rear comes in at 33.5 millimeters and the front at 24.5 millimeters for a 9 millimeter drop. And my men's size 11 weighed in at 10.1 ounces or 287 grams. Really not a bad weight for a daily trainer, especially when you think about how much stack height this shoe has at almost 34 millimeters in the rear. The Elliott Runner does fit true to size and Tracksmith advertises it as a medium width. We'll get more into that under the upper category a little bit. And it is also offered in four very Tracksmith uh, specific style colorways. Real quick before we get to the rest of the video, scroll down, click that thumbs up button, give the video a like, super easy to do and it does help out my channel a ton and the video and I would really appreciate it. So the upper of the Tracksmith Elliott Runner is an engineered mesh upper and features a woven sash here on the lateral and medial side to help secure that midfoot lockdown just a little bit. The upper collar of the shoe and the eye stays here is a suede material and it is a very premium feel to it. So right from the get go and straight out of the box, which I gotta say, this is the thickest cardboard box I have ever ever received from a shoe company. It is very premium. But yes, right out of the box, this shoe just screams premium and posh, at least in my opinion. It is a very quality shoe. Looking at the stitching detail on these eye stays here, the upper collar, the suede, everything about it is just top-notch quality and really well done. As for the breathability of the engineered mesh upper, let's take a look at the tissue test. When I switch the hair dryer on low, you can see the tissue goes up fairly quickly for being on low. It's really not, not bad at all. Switching it to high, it goes up even quicker, showing that this premium plush uh, upper is actually fairly breathable. When running, I could actually feel a little bit of airflow through the upper, while it is certainly not the most breathable shoe I've tested. As for the toe box of the Elliott Runner, it's really, again, just about average in width. It provided plenty of space for my average size foot. The midfoot as well, really average uh, for my average size foot. It really was not a problem, no discomfort. If you have a little bit wider foot, it's probably gonna be a little snug, so that may be an issue for your foot. Even the laces on the Elliott Runner feel premium. They really do, just to the touch. They feel like a really high quality lace. They are flat, they lay flat well, they tie really well and don't come undone. The eyelets on the eye stay here is, they're just so precise. You can tell it's, again, top quality, top notch. When you cinch these laces down over your foot, it really does provide a nice and secure lockdown. And that tongue underneath of those laces is really nicely padded. It's not crazy plush, but it's not in any way thin. It's, it's pretty padded and it is very comfortable. It's also fully gusseted on both sides and really protects your foot, the top of your foot, very well from those laces. I have had zero issues with discomfort with the lacing, any of it at all, it's been great. The heel collar of the Elliott Runner is also very padded and incredibly comfortable. And it's also the perfect depth, I must add, on the side. It's not too high, it doesn't rub the lateral malleolus at all. It was very comfortable. Really, when I began testing these shoes, I actually was dealing with some blisters on both of my, my uh, heels from other shoes. And so I was a little concerned when I grabbed these if it might rub a little bit, but honestly, I had no rubbing. And these were so incredibly comfortable, even with hot spots and blisters on my heels. Uh, I found myself continually grabbing the shoe and taking it out because I was nursing my heels back to health and I didn't have to worry about them with this shoe. It was just so comfortable. At the back, also the heel counter has a little flexibility. Overall, this entire upper, everything about it, really does not feel like a first try from a shoe company. This feels like a shoe that has been around for ages, five generations, and it's just been perfected. It really is honestly probably one of the better uppers I've tested this year so far. The midsole of the Elliott Runner is an innovative two-part system that's supposed to kind of mimic the feel of softer surfaces. A softer, thicker uh, insole here, which you can see this is very thick compared to most insoles, and it has a very nice embroidery on it. Again, looking very premium and very comfortable, by the way. This kind of looked like it might be a little not comfortable, but no issues at all. Again, great from Tracksmith. And on the back, if you want to read it, there's a cool little inscription on the back. 
Uh, just kind of a little fun thing there. Directly below that insole is the firmer midsole, which provides a little more protection and pop underfoot. Both of those, the insole and the midsole, are a super critical foam, the PBAX material. That softer insole, slightly firmer midsole, the PBAX material works really well together and provides a nice, responsive feel at all paces that I've tested so far. So like I said, I have tested the Elliott Runner at multiple paces, easy, threshold, fart lick paces, and it did really well for all of those. On those easy kind of recovery days, that PBAX material feels really good underfoot. It is soft, but yet firm. It's not a Hoka cushion from like say a Clifton 9, but it's definitely not firm either. It's kind of in between and feels really good for those long, slow days. However, if you do wanna do some pickups and run some faster miles, maybe some fart licks or even some threshold intervals like I did, that super critical foam, that PBAX material in there, provides a lot of response and feedback underfoot and feels really good. Even when pushing the pace, for me at threshold pace, felt really responsive and good. Honestly, I was uh, a little surprised and impressed with how good the shoe felt underfoot at those faster paces. Obviously, this is a heavier shoe than like a racing shoe. It doesn't have a carbon plate, so if you're gonna do dedicated speed work, you're probably gonna want a faster shoe. Being honest with you guys, I was a little worried when I first got the shoe knowing it has a nine millimeter drop. I've had some issues with higher drop shoes before, but honestly with these, I had no issues. They were so comfortable. I continually found myself reaching for these, lacing them up and taking them out, even over top of other shoes that I need to be reviewing as well, just because they are so comfortable. As for the outsole of the Elliott Runner, it's a very durable and sticky rubber compound. I'm not sure what kind of compound it is. I couldn't find it anywhere. I've seen some people call it a gum compound because of the color, the way it looks. It does seem to do a very good job in all conditions, whether it's wet, uh, even light urban trails, these did really well. Well on honestly I was again a little surprised with that uh, thicker midsole combined with the rubber it protected the foot from any kind of rocks that might kind of poke up just a little bit the tread pattern itself you can see is kind of um, almost like a chevron pattern just a little bit and provides plenty of grip both forward and laterally I had no issues whatsoever with grip at all I was really it was perfect. It was, it was great. Really, but for a road shoe, couldn't ask for anything better. So as for the price of the Elliott Runner, like I mentioned in the intro, it is a pricey shoe. It retails for 198 US dollars. That's a lot of money. Not going to lie. That's right in line with shoes that have a carbon fiber plate, weighs several ounces lighter as well. So for a daily trainer, that is, uh, yes, that is a hefty price. Well, the bottom line of the Tracksmith Elliott Runner is yes, Tracksmith nailed it for their first shoe. I think they succeeded well beyond a lot of people's expectations, including my own. I have, like I mentioned, picked the shoe up many times to go run in it. I love it. I will continue to wear this shoe a lot and probably wear it out because I do enjoy it that much. This is a shoe you could easily go do an hour run in and then go and uh, have dinner out on the town and it's stylish. It's going to fit in just fine. Or you could even take it to go play squash or racquetball. I don't know. It looks like it belongs in a country club. So maybe you're going to be going on a trip and you can only take one pair of shoes to run in and also walk around town. I think this is a great option. It's not going to stand out like a bold and bright running shoe. This will kind of blend in just fine. So if that's you and you need a shoe like that, then this might be a great choice. Well, now I want to know your thoughts. Have you tried the Tracksmith Elliott Runner? Did you like the midsole, the feel, the upper, everything just as much as I did? Did you have anything you didn't like? Let us know below. I'm sure everyone would really appreciate those comments as well. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. That does help out a lot. And I would really appreciate that. That'd be really cool. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate you all so much. And if you haven't already, why don't you take a look at the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 video. I think that shoe is somewhat similar to this. It's kind of a combination of the Clifton 9 and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. If, there was, if those two shoes had a baby, this might be it. Anyway, take a look at it. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you all so much. I'll see you in the next one.